P. James Tymor Hyatt calling the shift into private markets inevitable, but not without risk, echoing concerns over liquidity constraints and transparency. Tymor joins us right now, I'm pleased to say. Tymor, fantastic to catch up with you, sir. Thanks for your time. Can we start there? Just get your thoughts on what's been developing with Blackstone and this fund. Absolutely. I think uh, this was an inevitable learning moment when a whole new client segment, retail investors, high net worth investors, came into private alternatives. It is inevitable that when you have less liquid strategies with leverage in a retail vehicle that you can't get access to it with daily liquidity or even with monthly liquidity. So I would say these products are well structured. The big players in the market have learned from the global financial crisis how to create these. But it is a learning moment for retail investors that when you have underlying illiquidity, you can't get monthly or weekly liquidity. But the returns may be worth it. And the real question, I think, is once the redemptions end, will investors come back or will they be soured by this experience? How ready are they for the returns, but also the risks of private markets, Jonathan, is the real question. Time, I'm interested in the risk in private markets and how that shapes public markets and vice versa. Clearly, if you're in public markets and you're facing margin calls and redemptions, and then all of a sudden you've got to go and get this pool of cash that you can't get because you don't have liquidity in private markets, is a private market problem a public market issue ultimately or is it the other way around how do you think about that feedback loop yeah I think it's very interesting Jonathan really sort of three things have happened since the global financial crisis you had the commercial banks just step away from risky credit of all kinds and a whole set of new actors come in you had companies who realized they could stay private for much longer maybe forever and you had investors who were desperate for yield back then and said we are going to move into private markets where we can get more yield now those investors all our clients at PGM discovered that actually the liquidity premium, the diversification, a range of benefits in private markets actually makes it attractive. And I'm thinking real estate debt, private equity, private debt, infrastructure. But you're absolutely right when, you know, the cocooning of the world economy by the central banks goes away, some real vulnerabilities arise in private markets, and that's absolutely a cause of concern. How are you expecting that to materialize? Because clearly these investments made sense at 25 basis points on Fed funds, maybe 1%, perhaps even two. How does it work at five? It, it, it really exposes some vulnerability. Some we've already seen. We've seen the collapse of the cryptocurrency market. We've seen real estate values in the REIT market come down. So the obvious bubbles in the economy have already come. But what we are looking for next at PGM is what are the other vulnerabilities? One is there's just less transparency and in information once we move from the five big banks to a much broader set of private credit lenders. And I think the recession ahead, the stagflation in many countries, is really going to separate the Johnny come lately is who haven't really had the experience of underwriting for down markets versus those who've had that experience who worked through multiple cycles and I think it's also going to separate private credit Jonathan that relied on sponsors where activity is really going to dry up given you know they relied on leverage versus those who had direct origination so there's going to be a sort of a winners and losers divide in private credit and then the other risk I think investors should look at is more transparency in the past the parcel game that is happening in private equity where with continuation funds and subscription lines, you're never getting a mark-to-market -market from public markets on private equity companies, yep. but they're passing from one fund to another or getting a subscription line. I think that's a trend to look at very carefully and another place for vulnerability. Forgive me for only giving you 30 seconds to answer this, but that's all I've got. How are you as a firm managing this risk? Time we're at PGM going into next year. I think uh, this is a time for humility, it's a time for scenario analysis, and it's a time for not jumping in too soon. But nevertheless, Jonathan, we think next year, late next year, a little later than people think, this will be one of the best investment markets for both public and private assets. But patience is key.